Hi, and welcome to the Bezier node in-depth guide. So first thing I want to mention is you can actually apply Bezier node to an adjustment layer. It doesn't have to be a solid. You could even apply it to text if you wanted uh, a text layer, but it doesn't really matter. Anyway, first thing we're going to talk about is multi-line trim paths. So let's say we had three additional lines, which made a total of four. We've got some multi-line parameters here. So before I do that, I'm just going to keyframe the end from 0 to 100 and let's just watch what happens so we can see that they kind of stagger on one after the other and let's go into the multi-line params to see what's going on we got 50% stagger if we went 100% stagger that would mean that an int one line has to completely finish before the next one can start at the other extreme, if we went all the way to zero, there is absolutely no stagger at all. They all come on at exactly the same time. Let's go somewhere in the middle. And we also have this easing here. You might recognize these. These are exactly the same as the easing modes from Ease and Wiz, with Expo being the most extreme, down to none being no easing at all. And these values in the middle being somewhere in between. You might be wondering, why do we have easing here, we can just apply easing to the start and end position. So let's try that. Let's apply Expo in and out and see what happens. We can see we're not getting very good easing at this end here. These are sort of violently ending. And that's because we have some stagger here. So if we had absolutely no stagger, then this would be perfect. We can just apply whatever expression or curves or even yeah manual curves to this um, percentage change that we want and that would work fine but as soon as you introduce stagger it's not going to work because we have four lines here and expo in now only applies easing at the very start and end and we have lines that finish in the middle so that's why we have so i'll remove this expression here and then turn on expo easing and we'll see we get beautiful easing even with stagger We'll go something a little less extreme like quart. That looks good. We can also change the order modifier. We can reverse that or we can make it random. That's pretty self-explanatory. If we happen to have symmetrical turned on, we also have another feature here called inherit symmetry. I might just create some more lines so that will to help display what's going on here. If we have inherit symmetry, then the lines are going to start at the edges and then come into the middle. If we had reverse on, it would do the exact opposite of that. And without it, it's just going to go from start to finish. It's just going to ignore the fact that it's symmetrical. This leads into the next topic of what if we don't happen to have all our lines pointing to things that are exactly the same distance apart? What if we need some more control? I'm going to start with a new line here. And what we can do is we can go edit, copy with property links, and then we can create another layer, paste it there. We get some expression errors and I'm actually not sure exactly why we're getting those but they relate to anything that is percentage based. So I'm going to remove that on the trim paths. And now what we want to do is we want to composite it over the original and that has an expression tied to it. So we remove that by alt clicking on it. And then let's alt click on the end position because I want say to have this line pointing to something else. And now we have complete freedom of where these two individual lines point to, but we're controlling them with the one layer. We can change the curvature, we can change the width, we can change the color all on one layer. And if we duplicated this layer again, we could create an extra line like that. So very easy to control multiple lines with 100% precision. Now we'll take a look at how we can make Bezier node appear 3D. In this scene, I have two nulls orbiting around a center null. And what we can do is we can alt click on the start here go to the first null and go dot to comp and then we can go xyz in square brackets and then that will parent this to the screen space version of that and we want the same for the end as well I'm just gonna copy that and then go null one 
And now we have it orbiting around and it quite it's quite convincing. It actually looks, it appears 3D. That's also, I'm sure you guys have used that for the, um, the beam effect. It's a 2D effect, but pretty easy to make it look 3D. Another thing we can fake is motion blur. If we had our layer moving, for example, we get motion blur because the After Effects renderer does that for us if we turn on motion blur. However, if we were to say, move the start and end around or do some kind of trim paths, we don't get any motion blur even if we've got it turned on. Then I will set this expression to expo out. So it's gonna happen really quick and we can apply our CC force motion blur to that, maybe increase the samples and that's gonna give us the motion blur that we're not otherwise getting. That's about it for this tutorial. Um, we're currently working on some new features instead of just drawing a curve from A to B, we're working on an arc feature as well and some other cool things. Uh, if you ever have some ideas for how to make this plugin better, please let us know and you can just email at us at hello at plugineverything.com and make sure you check out our website for lots of other cool plugins and some free stuff.